Hi, this is Marcus Dupree, and you're listening live with Wolfie D. Hey, this is Jimmy Street, host of the Live and in Color with Wolfie D podcast. Hear the life and times of professional wrestler Wolfie D. From his time in the territories with PG-13, to his time in WWE, ECW, WCW, TNA, and more. Nothing is off limits, and nothing will be held back. Thanks again for tuning in. Here he is, Wolfie D. Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Live and in Color with Wolfie D and my man Jimmy across the street. And Jimmy, today I'm going to let you know, man, and you, well, you probably already know if you should see some of my posts and stuff, but man, I'm hooked on WWE 2K24 <laughs> on my yeah. Xbox, man. And you know, I love creating on these things, even back to the the days of uh, the, the Warzone game and all that, man. I love creating my own people. Yeah. And uh, right now I've just really created Slash and Wolfie D so far, but I'll get into some fictional people before too long. And I like to see what others do. There's some good folks out there, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love it. I, I mean, is there a chance of a Jimmy across the street? Who knows? Right. I think I probably one. make one. Yeah, maybe. But anyway, <laughs> you could be my manager. I would love that, by the way. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be incredible. But, okay, so it's so funny because I – what was it, SmackDown, Here Comes the Pain or something? I remember yeah. this was when Brock Lesnar was early on, and it was on the yeah. PlayStation 2. And I yeah. created my gimmick, and I had, like, you know, the Sting kind of tights on. But other than that, I look a lot like Slash because <laughs> that was just how I looked at the time with the Fu Manchu and the yeah. – Yeah, but it was oh. fun. Man. I miss those days. You know, but yeah, I hadn't played a wrestling game in so long, man. But uh, I, I'll give credit to Bob Cook because he was posting his stuff where he's playing. I think he's on 23, uh, where he's playing and making stuff. He makes some cool stuff, he makes arenas and everything. Yeah, I haven't gotten that far into it, but uh, yeah, so I blame Bob Cook. So now I got a game to keep me occupied sometimes, <laughs> but it's, it's fun, man. I, I dig it. Yeah, man, that's kind of why I stay away from video games is because I honestly, if I did that, I would just not have any time for anything. I'm just a, well, I, I, I get buried into them so deep and man, yeah. it's just well, like, it's hard. To, you know, I used to be like that, man, where I'd play a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, but I just, I can't do it no more. I'll play at night a little bit and that's about it. But yeah, yeah. I got to, and sometimes I'd rather just sit and watch TV anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, no. A loser, then, I'm it, lazy, I don't have a life. So. But isn't it funny how you like end up like you're like, wait, I started this at two o'clock and now yeah. it's seven o'clock, and you're like, right. wait a second, I just created my pants. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no shit. Because there's so much to uh, decipher through, and you know to find yeah. everything to make it right i remember it was like face body gear and, oh, boots, way, and it was over and then wrestling moves you know it's so. way more in depth now you could actually yeah. put your real face in there and shit i know bro <laughs> custom tattoos everything but anyway besides uh wrestling game you know i'll play some play some madden i really don't play too much other stuff and it's kind of funny i, I really didn't segue this on purpose but it just evolved into that so if you mix wrestling and madden together you kind of got our guest here we got a football Amen. player wrestler coming up yeah here. yeah uh, man I'm going to tell you, folks, if you have not watched ESPN's 30 for 30, uh, the, the greatest that never was, it's about Marcus Dupree, our guest today. Uh, watch it. If you don't know his story, it's a hell of a story. It and, is. Uh, you it's should amazing. really watch it. This dude was a beast yeah. on the football field. Oklahoma Sooners uh, broke Herschel Walker's record uh, in high school for rushing yards. And, man, I'm telling you, I'm excited about this. Um, Me too. Me too. When you sent me the message, you were like, man. And, you know, we ended last week's episode with Jimmy Golden. Great episode. Lots of fun. Yeah. People people digging my, you big dummy, you know, Red <laughs> yeah. Fox impersonation. But anyway, uh, mm -hmm. what's so funny is at the end of it, you were like, our next guest coming up. Hopefully we got this. And I said, yeah, a.k.a. the words hot. Well, I, <laughs> I wasn't talking about Marcus Dupree, but I'm happy – I'm much happier that we got Marcus than who. Yeah, we were man. So it, let, we'll it, just me and Marcus on. have a history. So, <laughs> right. I, know, I mean, he was in the USWA, man. You know. Yeah, so. yeah. We hung out a couple times, and 
Don't let that be that. But um, <laughs> I got to get that story. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, yeah. Uh, man, Marcus is a busy dude doing a lot of things, man. So let's get him on here so we can so we can uh, get him about his way and, and on with his day. But yeah. uh, let's do it, bro. All right. We'll be right back after these messages. Get ready for the greatest roast of all time. The Roast of Tom Brady. A Netflix live event happening May 5th, hosted by Kevin Hart. The seven-time world champion gets his cleats held to the fire by famous friends and frenemies on an unforgettable night where everything is fair game. Tune in on May 5th at 5 p.m. Pacific time for The Roast of Tom Brady, live only on Netflix. Hey, folks, to get your official Live It In Color with Wolfie D merchandise, go to ProWrestlingTees.com forward slash Live Wolfie D. Check it out. If you're listening to Live It In Color with Wolfie D on Apple Podcast and like what you're hearing, go ahead and leave a five-star rating. And while you're at it, write a review. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you'd like to hear in the future. It's very important to us and always appreciated. Thanks again. All right, guys. Congratulations. You survived the commercial break. You can now level up. Uh, Jimmy, again, another very special guest that I met way back in 1993, I believe it was, wow. uh, because he got into wrestling, which is pretty cool. We're going to talk about that. And man, what a story this man has. And if you haven't heard it, you must be living under a rock somewhere. And I am talking about one of the most recruited collegiate athletes in the history of football, man. We're talking about number 22 from the Oklahoma Sooners, Marcus Dupree. What's up, Boomer Sooner, baby? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. Man, your story has to be, if I could sum it up, it would be the same People uh, mistake kindness for a weakness, man. I think that you were such a nice guy, and I think so many people took advantage of that kindness that you have, man. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just you know, I look at that at it that way sometimes, but you know, I kind of do a uh, where I do my speaking engagements. I kind of do like you know, patience in the process. So it was a little patience, and life is a process. So I just I just look at it at it like that. And uh, what you don't die from, you just get stronger. So you, I, yeah. that's how I look at it. That's a good way to twist it, man, and make it in, turn a negative into a positive, man. But, yeah. man, what, the one thing that wasn't a negative, man, was your obviously your high school career and your uh, collegiate. Even though it got cut short, man, you were still just – you're a badass, dude, man. And number 22, you remind me uh, – well, I should say this because you're older than him. So Derrick Henry reminds me of you, and that's my favorite football player. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, the difference between me and Derrick, he's, he's tall – we kind of the same size, but I think me being a, just a total all around athlete, because a lot of people don't know, I batted 500 in high school in baseball. Uh, right. Yeah, I read and that. And then I ran track. The only person that beat me at at that time, I was a ninth grader. I ran a 10 3, uh, 9 500. But, you know, nowadays they run 100 meters, but the only yeah. person that beat me was uh, Calvin Smith, who at one time, point in time in his life, was the fastest human on earth. So. <laughs> Wow. I think that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, you're a beast, man. I watched some of your highlights and stuff like that. And what's unfortunate, man, is like when I met you back in the day, I just didn't follow football as much. I started following football when the Titans came to Nashville because I lived there. And when, when the Titans yeah. came to Nashville, I just became a football fanatic, man. And I, if if I had known more about you when I met you, oh, you probably hated me because I never would have shut up. <laughs> 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 well, you know, you know, David and uh, uh, Steve, Doctor Jeff Williams brought me into the into the wrestling. Uh, I played, you know, at Oklahoma with Steve, and yeah. uh, then we he just taught me, man, you should come and you know, try wrestling with us, and blah blah blah. So that's how I kind of got into the game. So yeah. you, so let me ask you this: you did you follow wrestling growing up? Oh, I love I, I follow wrestling from the top of the Mississippi to the bottom, bro. I was a big. Yeah. Uh, uh, Bill Watts fan, you know, you know, I'm friends with uh, Jim Ross. You know, we yeah. go to the games all the time now at OU. So I'm oh, big yeah. friends with Jim Ross, and so that's how I kind of got in. 
That makes sense. So, you got any good Dr. Death stories? Uh, oh, you know, if I could have had a chance to think about it, I probably would have come <laughs> up with some. Uh, I just, you know, just being playing with Doc and just being in the huddle, you know, he just, you know, he just looked at me and he was a senior. So yeah. but, um, when we first start, you know, when freshmen come into to, to freshman fall practice, you know, you're the only people on campus, really. So yeah. Doc, Doc was a senior, so he's you, you can see the, the dorm from the practice field. And so all of a sudden we hear this big bellow like, Wah! <laughs> Everybody's like, you know, freshmen, you know, coming out practice the first, first day in there. Who is that? Who, is, who the hell is that? And everybody's like, oh, that's Dr. Dell. So everybody's like, oh, shoot. Is he crazy or what? And then everybody's like, no, nah, well, he plays on offense. So I'm like, oh, I'm good then. Let's go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, who is a different bird now. Who who was probably the like the hardest person, say like a linebacker or something? Who was one of the hardest people you went up against? Was it the like the person that you and him got you got concussed and got knocked out or whatever, or was it somebody it was, else? Man, it was my high school defense. That's what made me so good because I grew up with all those guys in high school, uh-huh. and all of my guys I want I grew up with, we were all hungry, and man, yeah. they didn't care. They was they would knock you out with no problem. Right. So uh, it, it's it's it's. You know, playing at a 2A high school in Mississippi is tough. People don't realize how tough it is because we had 13. Oh. Those two years, we had 13 guys sign D1 scholarships. Really? You know, that's unheard of at a 2A high school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And yeah. describe, you know, describe what it was like at that age, man. And you got people showing up at your house and hundreds of phone calls and all these money offers. And I mean, describe how you felt as a, as the, at that age. Bro, you know, I was just enjoying the ride, bro. Me and my high school friends and cousins, we all played ball. They all got recruited. And so we, we're kind of just enjoying it, just embracing it. It wasn't really any pressure. Everybody thought it was a pressure. It wasn't any pressure. I just gonna um, pick a school. Just glad to be able to get a scholarship, really. So my yeah. mom didn't have to pay for me to go to college. So that's how I'm, all my friends thought, and that's how we all, you know, dedicated that playing ball. So our moms don't have to, you know, pay for us to go to college. Yeah, right. yeah. And I promise, there was no I pressure, bro. It wasn't any pressure. Everybody thought it was pressure, man. We enjoyed it. We embraced it. Uh, it just not a lot of it was not knowing how this worked. So, yeah. but we, you know, we enjoyed it, and so hey, they do I, what it do. I promise I'll get off the football here in just a second because I definitely want to talk about some of the stuff you're doing as far as movies and uh, all that kind of stuff, and and a little bit more wrestling. But the, I. I I want to know, what do you think, and was he just like that with everybody, or did Switzer just have a hard-on for you individually? He, everybody that I played with, everybody that knew around Switzer, he just just was an asshole at that time. <laughs> he, was just, he, you know, he was just cocky, he was winning, and yeah. he, just, he, was just a, he just was an asshole. He admitted that's he was wrong. I mean, that's yeah. all I can accept, but, you know, you messed my money up by fucking me up. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, yeah if, you know, but now we're trying to do some things together in my hometown. Hopefully it'll work at Costco's, Publix, and uh, who else? Kroger. And so we're trying to put in a $100 million facility in my hometown where there's opportunity zones there. And uh, awesome. a lot of people need jobs. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so hopefully it works out for us. Yeah, that's very cool. You've always been very involved in your community. Yeah. Jimmy, hot tag to Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, so, okay, well, uh, let me just add, you know, kind of talking about football. I mean, you made Barry Switzer change the wishbone. You were so good that he changed his whole scheme. So, I guess – when when that happens, do you think okay, I'm just an extraordinary player, and he's doing this for me, not knowing that like you're kind of you're kind of putting something together that really, uh, I mean, to me, I mean, you're kind of they, what did they call you? What is it they said that the thirty for thirty was best that never was? I mean, you were though. That's the thing. I, I never really liked that title. I saw the the, the thirty for thirty. It was incredible. Well, but I just, you know, I, it was. It, kind of like a marketing deal. Of As course. People started to say, man, this dude, he wasn't the best that was, never was. He was the best. Right, so exactly. They're, they're, yeah. they're, they're doing, a uh, matter of fact, they're, we did a 30 for 30. Uh, but he should be coming out this season. Uh, okay. About what, why was why was the reason the wish wrong was broken? 
Yeah. And so they're going to have me, Hershey Walker, Bo Jackson, uh, a couple other guys are going to talk about what happened to the wishbone offense. Okay. Uh, I think it's going to be an interesting story that comes out uh, when this is You know, Oklahoma comes into the SEC, and, uh, you know, Texas comes into the SEC, so it's gonna, I think it's going to be a big story. Yeah, that's, that's cool. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. So I'm going to I'm going to pivot to wrestling real quick, okay? So PG-13, right? Okay. Two rapping right. white two rapping white boys, okay? Right. And I I wanted to talk about Marcus Dupree in the Nation of Domination. <laughs> <laughs> so so it's it's not it's not that I'm mistaken that you were in the nation. I'm saying why didn't you get the call to bring Marcus up to the WWE with y'all, man? <laughs> Well, I, you know, I, I was just doing something, man. I was just trying to see if I could do it because I was a wrestling fan. Yeah. I get with, get up with, with uh, all the guys in Memphis. I mean, I day at the football game on Friday night. All my friends, all we did was watch wrestling from 8 o'clock in the morning to the late that night. All we watched, you know, Atlanta. We watched uh, uh, Tupelo wrestling, which came out of Tupelo, which was actually Memphis. And then yeah. we watched uh, Atlanta in the evening. So yeah. it was like a full day of nothing but wrestling. So how we was always just wrestling fans and, and just kept up with it. Yeah. Okay, well, in the fall, what, does that change to football? Or are you still watching wrestling that day? Oh, we still watching wrestling. We, we're not watching <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, there's room for both, right? <laughs> yeah, there's room for both. We, you know, we, we, we juggle our schedule, but mainly was wrestling. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Do you still follow wrestling today? Not as much as I did when I was younger. Yeah. Because it's kind of changed. It's more entertainment now, yeah. I guess. Uh, it just doesn't have the same feel as back in the day with oh, you know, yeah. Mid-South and all that. It's just a that's different total feel. Yeah. yeah, it does. But recently, me and Jimmy talked about this. The WWE is on a roll, and they're actually taking things back a, a, a lot more old school, and it's very refreshing to watch. Yeah. yeah. Right, 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 right. I've been watching it lately, so I, I think I watched it Thursday night. I think maybe. Uh huh. Uh, they are okay. talking about it. I guess they get ready for the, the WrestleMania or whatever. Yeah, that, that that brings up a question. I've asked Wolfie this question before, and since you actually played NFL pro football and you've wrestled for the USWA, if you had to pick and it was on the same night, would you pick Super Bowl or WrestleMania to watch? Depends on who's wrestling now. <laughs> okay, wow. <laughs> it depends on who's in the game too, right? <laughs> yeah, who's in the game. Yeah, it depends on who's in the game and who's playing in the Super Bowl. I'll probably watch have the, the Super Bowl because you can always come back and watch it again later on that night. So I'll probably watch half the Super Bowl depending well, on who's wrestling. If The Rock or right. WWE, I mean, uh, 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 Roman Reigns, Roman or, Reigns or, or, or Stone Cold. Undertaker. It's okay. Undertaker, yes. <laughs> oh, I couldn't tell it for nothing. Undertaker, yes. <laughs> hey, so here's a, here's my question. I will one up that question. Okay. If you had an opportunity to play in the Super Bowl or have a match on WrestleMania and they were the same night, which one would you choose? I'm going with WrestleMania, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with WrestleMania because it's a different crowd and you get a, you get a different uh, marketing. Uh, era, whatever. Yeah, and you're so, and you're you're solo. You're not playing with a team. You get yeah, all the credit. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Can so you tell us about tell us <laughs> about awesome. like you told me you were producing some stuff, and I know I saw something where there's I mean, you're gonna tell, have to tell me how to watch it, but uh, there was a movie that I think that you starred in, maybe more than one. Uh, you talking about Mississippi? Uh, wait a minute, M- uh, mysterious circumstances. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes, it's, a, it's a true story about Lewis and Clark. Yeah, so I played yeah. the free, I played the free play that led Lewis and Clark around the world. And you got to hang out with Bo Duke, man. That's awesome. Yeah, so you, that's a funny story. I already knew Bo. I yeah. knew I knew John Snyder from being recruited in the ninth grade. So my uh, friend Marty Gamlin is from Philadelphia, and he was out there in L.A. He also just disappeared. And so he's like, Marty, he come back home to. He was working out at the high school gym, and we we're all working out there too. And he's like, Marty, where you been? He's like, you know, I'm Glenn Campbell's manager now, so I'm in L.A., and so, he, you know, he used to come back and forth, and we used to see him because we were in Boy Scout, and he was over to Boy Scout. 
And so uh, he's like, Martin, we want to come to L.A. We want to see all the superstars and stuff like that. So, well, y'all pick a time and y'all come out here during the summer. So we went out and put us in a big house in Beverly Hills. And every, when I say everybody in, at that time knew Marty, it was like, wow, we met Michael Jackson. We might, uh, I mean, we met so many people. Uh, right. Super Rango, that's when we met both. Uh, John Snyder at the at where all the stars work out at, and so wow. we met him and and, and and so when he we, when I found out he was gonna be in the movie, so I ran up to him. I said, Marty, do you remember me? I mean, uh, John, you remember me? And he's like, I kind of do. I said, let me get Marty on the phone. So we called Marty, and so we had a reunion, and so then that's when I started being in the movie back in the movie with him. So I did two with him at his studio. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah so, Dude, that, that was like my dream to hang out with Bo Duke as a kid, man. I acted like I was Bo Duke, you know? So. See, we're, we're, Jimmy, this is where we're different. I would have preferred to hang out with Daisy. Oh, well, fair enough. Good point. Touche, Wolfie. Yeah, you're I'm right. Sure. I'm, yeah. I'm sure. Hey, check this out, though, Wolfie. Yeah. When I was being recruited, so I didn't know Farrah Fawcett went to Texas. Oh, oh no. went to Texas. So yeah. she up and called me and recruited you need to come visit Texas, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, my God, this pair of boxes? Oh, no. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You know, like, that is crazy, man. It's just amazing. It, it is, man. I mean, seriously, because like I was saying earlier, you know, I, I, you you say you just kind of you was enjoying the ride and whatnot, but man, that's got to be freaking cool, man. At that age, people just because you were so damn good at football, they're just treating you like royalty, man. Yeah, man. I'm telling you. I mean, one time, uh, uh, Ron Myers flew in. He was just flying to see another recruit, and so it was around right before Christmas or whatever. And so he said, "Marcus, I'm going to call." called my house and so at that time he was like okay I'm going to stop in I'm going to stop in Philadelphia on the way to see another recruit so he stopped in on the Lear Jack and uh, then me and my cousin go see him at the airport and he pulls out five grand right there said there was more from where that come from so think about the LSU and gets back on the plane and leaves <laughs> <laughs> wow. That must be nice, man. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> five, five grand in 1982. That's right. a five lot grand. of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we oh eat Sizzler. <laughs> <laughs> man, well, yeah. What do you think about all this? I mean, can you imagine how much money Marcus Dupree would have made if the NIL had have existed at that time? Man, it's funny that people talk about NIL. My mom was talking about NIL back in 1982. She comes oh, to man. a game, and, and she, matter of fact, it, it was the Oklahoma State game, and at that time I was starting, and so in the stands, all these people had the Ron Marcus Dupree t-shirts on, they had the foam finger, number one, Ron Marcus Ron, so after the game, my mom says, are they paying you for that? I'm like, <laughs> no, mom, they ain't paying for me. She said, well, <laughs> they're going to start giving you something after why I leave here today. So, <laughs> I started getting two and three thousand dollars in my room every now and then. So, yeah, she was talking NIL way back in 1982. That is amazing. But, they got, but, but they're gonna have to do. They're gonna have to will it in a little bit. I yeah. think they're, 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 they're getting over the top. I mean, I think all players should get X amount of dollars straight across the board, no matter if you're a superstar or not. Give them right. three to four thousand dollars a month, and everybody should be happy. Not three hundred thousand. Right. Right. I mean, can you imagine making more money than your coach does and then having to respect him? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, or getting the can you imagine being a coach and your your star running back is making more money than you do and you're wanting respect from him? It's just it can open that. And then the transfer portal, golly, pretty soon they're going to be like, Marcus Dupree on that play for Oklahoma. Oh, here he shows up in the next quarter at Texas. Oh, man, now he's <laughs> right. in Tennessee. You know, it's like. Exactly. Yeah. They're they going to reel it in. They let it get out of hand. And so, but they should have been taking care of this 30, 40 years ago. Amen. Amen. You're right. You're right. So, yep. who do you see in the current game? That reminds you of you. Uh, only person gonna come close is Derek Henry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Deuce, deuce. But the thing is, the thing is, when I was on you, I was the third team quarterback running the Ox. And then yeah. I was quarterback in high school. I played free safety in high school. I was a four. I was dunking the basketball in the seventh grade. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Wow. Seventh grade. I remember when I touched the rim in the, in my senior year <laughs> and I'm six, two and I touched the rim and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm bad. I'm white man can jump right now. You know? And, and there's guys dunking in seventh grade. My God. <laughs> I could, I, mean, I could know, dunk I'm, a volleyball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, you know, you know, I'm from a 2A high school. We were barely 2A high school at that time. So we were beating 6A, 5A, 4A high school. Wow. Wow. So, it, you know, the girl, I was blessed to come up with the girl guys that I, I came up with because we all grew up together. We all knew how each other thought, and that's how we dominated the game. Yeah. Let's take a quick time out and get a word from one of my dope-ass sponsors, and we'll be right back with more Live and in Color with Wolfie D. You ready? Showtime. On May 3rd, summer starts with The Fall Guy. What are you doing later? Let's drink a spicy margarita. Make some bad decisions. Yes! Audiences are falling in love with the most entertaining film of the year. Fall guy. Fall guy. Fall guy. That's what the poster said. See Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt in the movie critics say exists to make you happy. Trying to make it out? Nope. Because I don't either. It's not what I'm into right now. What are you into? Talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Fall Guy. Only in theaters May 3rd. Read it PG-13. Saturday, May the 11th, 2024, the biggest pro wrestling event in Columbia, Tennessee's history, Mulletown Mania Fan Fest. Over 50 wrestlers from the past and present going to be there for the meet and greet from 2.30 to 5.30. Also that night, TriStar Wrestling has a huge card already signed. Doors open at 6 for that. Bell time will be 7 p.m. You're not going to want to miss it. A huge card already signed. Also, Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling will be in the house that night doing a Q&A with the Devils, the Wild Boys, and the Mortons from 4.30 to 5.30. Also, you have Cave Babe Cave. They're your toy collectibles and wrestling memorabilia dealers. They're going to be in the house. Also, we've got the Devil's Disciples. Mephisto and Dante will be there. The Wild Boys, Ben Jordan and Steve Neely. The Monster Forsaken. The Fox, Tony Falk and the LT Ball. The Morton Brothers, Steve and Shane Morton. The Smoking Buds, Cody and David Morton. Jerry Lynn and Virginia Morton. Hot Rod Biggs. Jeff the Crippler Daniels and Dominique will be there. Debbie Combs, Lady Superstar. Sunny Street will be in the house. Luscious Quentin Charisma. One Half a Booty Call, Brian Turner. Mad Max. Cowboy Billy Montana, Scott Spade and Mistress Misery, Superstar Mikey Dunn, DBSG, Johnny Bandana and Ryder Anderson, The New Era, Tavon Jordan, D'Amico Graves, The One and Only, Majestic, Mr. Entertainment, Yukon Jack, Yours Truly, Pat Dooley, DJ R, Danny Pig, The Voice, Kane D, Pretty Boy, Preston Adams, plus many, many more. The meet and greet will be $15 if you buy your ticket in advance, $20 at the door. TriStar Wrestling that night, $10 if you buy your ticket in advance, $12 if you buy it at the door. This is a huge night, Saturday night, May 11th, 2024, in Columbia, Tennessee, at the National Guard Armory at 844 North James Campbell Boulevard. It's going to be the place to be for the best wrestling action around. Come and meet some of your local stars, some of your favorite people, some of your least favorite people from your past and present. This is going to be an opportunity that you're not going to want to miss. This is going to be well worth the price of admission alone just for the meet and greet. And then TriStar Wrestling that night. Biggest wrestling event ever signed in Columbia, Tennessee. How did it feel when they told you you broke Herschel Walker's high school record? I felt great. I mean, it was a uh, matter of fact, that's going to be part of the movie because they're doing a script for my movie right now. That's going to uh-huh. be one of the scenes in the movie. Yeah. Wow. I guess after that happened, did you, did he, did you get to meet him then and he come and, you know, congratulated you? Or, you I, know? I, I met him at, uh, at, Ole Miss, at the Ole Miss game on my recruiting trip. When Ole uh-huh. Miss and uh, Georgia was playing. So I did two recruiting trips, per, per se, that day, one for Ole Miss and one for, uh, for Georgia. What did he say? Uh, he was just like, man, you come over here with me and we would, do, we would, we would kill the SEC. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to get the ball at least 13, 15 times. 
you can't carry the whole game. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so yeah, it was a good time meeting him. Yeah. That's funny. Man. Um, right. No, I'm just curious. You're talking about the movie about your life. Who's playing Marcus? Do you know? Is, there, is so, that person so, cast? Yeah, yeah, we hadn't got to that part yet. They're just right now developing the treatment yeah. for it. Uh, we were in New York last week talking about it. And so they're going to take a uh, – probably about a month and come down to Philadelphia and, and talk to people because they're the same people who did Mississippi Burning. And oh, so wow. Mississippi okay. Burning is my hometown. Yeah. And yeah. So, yeah. So they're going to come back and talk to some more people and, and uh, finish up the script. That's cool, I think man. there should be a scene in the movie about the night me, you, and Jamie went out, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we hear more? Can we hear more? No, we can't hear more. That's- <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> no, sir. What, what did you think about PG-13 when you first met him? What, what were your thoughts, man? Like, Man, I thought they were cool. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they came, I mean, just a different look. Right. And how they did things. I mean, yeah. same thing with uh, what's his uh, Jerry Lawler's son. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. I thought that we was, talk- yeah, you know, y'all followed into the trend of the young and the, you know and the hip, and so that that caught a lot of attention. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. I'm just curious because, I mean, like, if there was something that you could tell young Marcus, knowing now what you know now, what what are some things that you would tell the young Marcus? To start getting inf- more information about, you know, when I was being recruited because I didn't, my mom was in school too. She didn't know nothing about recruiting. Uh, just line up, th- like, now I'm helping my grandson who, who was being recruited and he signed with Jackson State. But awesome. But it's just yeah. getting up. Getting the information that you need and getting the information, the communication with the coaches, because all the coaches are going to tell you the same freaking thing. Yeah. You know, are you going to be a player here, blah, blah, blah? But you got to do your own research. <coughs> Let your parents do the research and see, yeah. you know, if you, if you plan on trying to play your first year, which most freshmen don't, right. uh, you got to know all those things. Who's ahead of you? How many, how many guys are ahead of you? What's their grade? I mean, what classification? Are they staying? Are they going? It's a lot of things that I, now that I know is, is a lot of details that you need to, ch- to check out. Yeah, yeah. Especially you, now in this day, this day and time. No doubt, yeah. no doubt. I mean, do you feel like there was there was a spot where you went right and you should have went left or something like that? Is there a time frame that you can point it back to to where you say, okay, this was the time that I should have really gone this path instead I went that path? Do you Can you think of well, a time? You know, it, if Coach Switzer would have been a little better instead of just being hard on me, yeah. uh, all he had to do was communicate. He didn't have to be hard on me. He just tell me if I'm fucking up, I'm right. Excuse me. Yeah. If I'm messing up, I'm I'm messing up. Come tell me. Right. Don't go and tell somebody else. And I hear it in the darn street, or I hear it on. Oh, he should have did this. Even when I, I mean, my first scrimmage, I I ran 150 yards against the first team offense, and I wow. was running 14. And all wow. these guys are all Americans and all that. And the reporter said, man, he had a great day. Oh, he missed the block over here. He missed the block over there. Blah, blah. <laughs> he said, but this is the freaking number, almost the number one defense in the country. He just shredded it. Right, right. <laughs> he still got something to say. He had nothing positive to say. <laughs> man, man. <laughs> what was harder, playing football or wrestling? Uh, Football. <laughs> yeah. It's right. Now, do you say that because you know you don't know the pretty much the licks are coming half the time, or you know, is it that? Yeah, or? I mean, yeah, pretty much. You know, you know, guys coming at you six two, two thirty, two forty, running a four five. Yeah, and I'm running a four five, four four. We colliding. <laughs> yeah. So that's it. <laughs> and I guess yeah, I guess no when joke. I say that too, not necessarily like that, but like learning it because I I've, I've worked with people that you know were good athletes and stuff like that in school and this and that. But I try to t- I teach them wrestling and like they're very stiff and robotic and and their footwork's not good. So that's the, I guess that's kind of what I was getting at is as far as like learning yeah, the, the craft mean, of it. Yeah, I guess a little bit. Of, they both probably about the same. Like you said, yeah. you got to look at the little things. And then, like yeah. in the NFL, you know, you can't be a dummy playing NFL football. No, no so, not at all. I mean, yeah. the play can get changed two or three times before the turn snap. And you got yeah. to know who to pick up and who not to pick up and when to get in your pass route. When You know, there's just so many different things and the plays change. And mm-hmm. uh, you can't be a dummy playing in the NFL. Yeah. 
No. Who's who? In your opinion, who's the best pro running back of all time? Uh, I'm gonna say. Well, it, it would have been Barry if Barry yeah. would have had the same offensive line that Emmitt Smith had. Oh, Lord. Emmitt Lord. Smith did not get freaking touched until he got to the pre stages. Right. right. Exactly. So if if, yeah. if Walter Payton or Emmitt or or Barry would have had that same line that uh that Emmitt Smith had. Cause, it was okay, but I don't think he's a great running back. No, he was just on a great uh, team, and he can be a good running back. On a back, great team, they had, yeah. yeah, they had all the they had all the parts at that time. Yeah. So I'm gonna say like Walter Payton. Uh, I I think Earl Campbell was even better than Jim Brown. Oh wow! Oh, wow, Campbell man, the beast, man. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. I, I I love that, but I mean, I love Jim Brown too. You know, so there's nothing, right? You know, but that's cool that you say that. I mean, you know. Because he was a bigger athlete, and everybody else at that time was small. So right. then you bring us up to the era where Earl was playing. I mean, it was no whole bar. Right, so right. Made, was no whole, I mean, too. Yeah, doing yeah. Clothes lines and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because Jim Brown was kind of like when Wilt Chamberlain came into basketball. You know, he was bigger than everybody. He dominated, right? Wilt Chamberlain yeah, scoring yeah. 100 points a game, you know, <laughs> right. on guys exactly. looking like me down in the paint. Stop, sir. You know? <laughs> right. But, but but when it comes down to it, you know that that's that's a good perspective. I like that that you said that Earl Campbell's the man. You know, so yeah. Hey, so and I know Earl, we're running low on on your time here and i want to know the answer to this so when you didn't get on the plane in jackson at the airport and you went missing for a week and the fbi was involved where the fuck did you go <laughs> I, was in, I was sitting over there at mississippi college in my roommate's room i mean my <laughs> just, homeboy's room alvin kid <laughs> just, just hanging out i was in uh Clinton, Mississippi. Yeah, yeah because just... Alvin played. He was, Alvin was playing at Mississippi College. Oh, okay, so gotcha. Like, oh, I ain't getting back on this plane. Fuck, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm, come pick me up. And so, <laughs> I knew I can play. I had a concussion. So I knew yeah. they were going to try to make the play. Back then, yeah. they were going to try to make the play. So right. I freaking couldn't see. Yeah. <laughs> so, so were you seeing... Like were you seeing uh, the news and stuff that they were looking for you, and you're just like, uh, yeah. So man, I was like, man, you gotta call your mama now because you're gonna be first. So I finally called my mom, and so everything was good. <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up. Yeah. Uh, I can't imagine sitting there knowing that the FBI is looking for me and everything. <laughs> Hang <Just> out. <laughs> That's a great story. You you really do have a. a just a great life story, man. It's cool to me. It's it's motivational. It's 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 a lot of things, man. There's so much to it. And I really hope that the that the movie they're doing or the uh, about you comes out great because I mean, there's so much depth and well, uh, twists know, and turns. You know, you know what? You know, they saying that it's gonna do well. It should do way better than than the blind side because a lot of the blind side was a lot of fiction. Right. So this is gonna be right. a lot of this is gonna be true. True yeah. stories, true everything. Right. So that's why they're thinking it should be way better. And then I was best friends with the son, the son of the sheriff that let the three civil rights workers out when they got killed. So oh, man, wow. I was best friends. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So that's going to be a story in itself. Yeah. Yeah. So I've got one final question for me, and I'll I'll be I'll shut up. I promise. This is a question that I just think is kind of cool. I don't expect you to go digging through your phone to tell us, but just a name that comes to your mind. Who was the most famous person in your cell phone? <laughs> uh, most famous person in my cell phone right now, maybe well, Darius did. Rucker. Darius Rucker. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're uh, friends with Hootie, huh? Person, yeah. Yeah. So second person may be with would probably be Don Snyder or or Jim Caviezel, who played Jesus in the Passion of the Christ. Wow. I just talked uh, to Jim, Jim wow. uh, two days ago. Yeah, he was That's just cool. in that movie that came out. What was that about? Looking for the the trafficked kids. Oh my gosh, I can't remember the movie. Anyway, yeah, somebody he trafficking. Yeah, he just did that. Now he just told me. Sir, I just talked to him Wednesday. We said they get ready to start the, the filming of the resurrection. 
Yeah, the resurrection. Yeah, it's the yeah. second. It's the man. <laughs> It'll be an well, easier movie for him this time around. <laughs> <laughs> I know the story. <laughs> yeah. Well, Marcus, man, like I said, we really appreciate you coming on. I know you got a busy schedule and uh, taking time out for us, man. And uh, long time no see, man. Maybe uh, somewhere down the line we can uh, see each other again. Uh, no Let's more nights. It, no it. more nights like the before, but uh, <laughs> and we still can't get that story. We don't get old, brother. We can't. That's we right. Get up in the morning. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> man, you take it easy, man, and uh, have a good rest of your day. And thank you again. Thank you, sir. Hey, thank you, guys, man. Y'all call me anytime. Let's do it. All, All right. right. Sounds good, buddy. All thank right. you. And we will be right back with Ask Wolfie Anything. <sighs> DJ, hit that music. All right, we are back with Ask Wolfie D anything, and man, oh man, you're still not going to tell me that PG-13 Marcus Dupree story, dude. That's that'll have to be off the air. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, man, and and it's not because of me. I just, uh, yeah, right. I don't I understand. I don't tell other people shit like that. Exactly. <laughs> no, and you've been you've you've kind of set that from the start. You're like, look, yeah. dude, I'm not not going into that. But <laughs> man, what a cool guy. You know, we only had him for a little while, but yeah. I was happy. I felt like there was no fat on the on the you know, bone left. Man, I mean, I don't yeah. think there was anything left to ask yeah. him. Honestly, you know, for sure, man. And like and like I said before, we got started, man. If you haven't uh, checked out his ESPN or just go on YouTube and, yeah. and search his name and watch some of his uh, highlights from college and stuff. Dude was a beast, man. Absolute beast. And, you know, what's so funny. You know, my brother's a big sports fan. I was like Marcus Dupree. And he was like, yeah, that guy. Boom, 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 boom. And he sent me all this stuff. I was yeah. like, you kind of sending me that stuff. He was passionate <laughs> about it. So it was very cool. And, you know, honestly, the brother, I mean, if you just want to say, well, this ain't no football podcast well it can be whatever wolfie wants yeah, it to. Sure. but but at the <laughs> same time he did have a time in uswa and if you don't remember that then go check your uswa tapes you recorded and stuff. so That's yeah it. he's there so yeah well, well, well anyway way, happy jimmy well anyway since it was a shorter episode what i was thinking is could we maybe get a couple maybe at least one extra question in for the for the yeah, listeners we could do that all right well we'll do that then okay i'm, I'm so easy yeah, you're you're sometimes easy to do things with, but yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all right. The very first question today. So this one is from at that guy Christo four seventy four, and he says, "Was there supposed to be an in game with the Cobain character you teamed with for like a week?" <laughs> uh, I don't know what that in game would have been, man. Uh, it was just kind of thrown together, spur of the moment thing. Uh, not my idea. And, uh, yeah, so I, there was, I don't think there was any plans for that. And again, it was just one of those things where once I lost Brian, it was, uh, tough sledding for me to, you know, get something work to end to, to make sense, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. No doubt. I was just, I was just happy to still be wrestling. <laughs> so what do you think was the constant change with the Cobain, with the, you know, with Sin Bodhi? I mean, what was the constant? Was it just t- TNA not wanting to ha- keep the guys around or just not feeling it? Man, I, I, I don't know, man. I think, honestly, I think me and Brian set the bar high enough that um, I couldn't, I say I, we, whomever it was, couldn't, I don't think we ever got there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And plus yeah. then Mitchell wasn't around uh, for those either. So right, kind of right. took the new church out of the new church, you know? Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense, man. And I mean, un- unfortunately, when you cut the head off and the tail and all that, it's usually yeah. lights out for the rest of it, you know? Yeah. So, man. Well, yeah, anyway, you know, that was a good question. Definitely appreciate that. We always love to talk about Flash playing again, too, man. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And Sin Bodhi. And be sure to go check out his LJN custom wrestling figures. Get yourself made or your favorite wrestler 
Yeah, man, he does some incredible stuff, man. Yeah, it's, he's he's on. It's really I, when I was out in Vegas, I was tempted to try to find him to go look at that collection, man. But yeah, yeah, yeah I thought it might be a little weird, but anyway, so <laughs> just he's bring, the warlord of weird. What are you talking about? He is the warlord of weird. You're right. Good point. Yeah. All right. Well, the next question is from Just Frank ten fifteen, and he asked this one. He says. Was bringing the PG and and I, let me just preface this: we know that you had done the slash gimmick in OVW, and we'd also known that you'd kind of gone past the PG thirteen gimmick. But let me just ask this: was bringing the PG thirteen persona to TNA ever discussed? Was changing back to that ever thought of? Well, go with that. No, I I never thought of it. I'm pretty sure they didn't either. Uh, and like I say, man, during that time period. Uh, you know, John Cena uh, was over <laughs> yeah. and uh, it would have just to a lot of people, it, like I say, even though I did it first, they would have thought, you know, I was a rip off of him, which is far from the truth. But, you know, it, it, I, I wouldn't have wanted to. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and yeah. the only reason that I, you know, like a few years back for um, Ric Flair's last match pay-per-view is just because uh the nostalgia of it, you know, and the, I pretty much do that at any signings, Wolfie or anything that I do now, because just more people know that name, you know? Right. Of course. Yeah. And, it, you know, you've, uh, you're always Wolfie, even, you know, when, when we talked to father James Mitchell, even though you were slash under yeah. him the entire time, he always calls you Wolf, you know, or yeah. Wolfie. Hey, Wolf. Yeah. yeah, Wolf. Most people do. Yeah. I mean, love you, just, Wolf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most people do, man. And it's just the, I guess, you know, also with my last name for legit being Wolf with an E on the end. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's natural. I had teachers in school that would call me Wolfie uh, when they, you know, say, you know, first day of school or whatever, and the teacher's going over the role. Warren Wolfie. <laughs> right. Right. You can't read, mother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. you're teaching me. <laughs> <laughs> I one guy uh, called me. Uh, one teacher called me Warren Waffle. Warren I, know, Waffle. I don't know if it was written on there uh, funny or something, but yeah, he called me Warren Waffle. Everybody thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that could have led into a you know it's like last episode, Big Dummy. I was worried the listeners were going to pick up on that and call me Big Dummy from now on, but and it can still happen. But anyway, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, you're glad that didn't didn't catch on, right? Yeah, <laughs> I do like the Waffle House. I love the Waffle House, man. Warren okay, Waffle. yeah, right. Warren Waffle. The next one is at Master of Viewership. Okay, right. and this one is for anywhere. You USWA, WWE, WCW, ECW, TNA, whatever you want to talk, USWA, whatever. Did you know anyone who would politic their way or was everyone happy with paying their dues? So main, mainly, did you know anyone in your time that was a big political person that absolutely okay. politic? Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, lots and lots and lots, man. Uh and I don't really want to call people out, but I mean, God, there's been so many people and it comes down to money, man. You right. Know, some people would pay to play, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just the thing. It always has been, uh, to my knowledge. But yeah, man, a lot of people would politic their way uh, by paying money, you know, giving extra money or, you know, whatever, man. The, the, only, the only way you're going to do something like if you're really good, you don't have to pay but you can still be a politician you know and that and that that helps it's not really a bad thing to per se i just was never really good at it <laughs> i just yeah. tried to let my talent speak for itself and you know of course i, I was good friends with randy which uh, i did a lot of politic in there just but in my mind it's not that was just being friends and talking on the road and hey what about this what about this you know and, right uh, so you know that's a thing but yeah i mean there's always going to be politics and you know uh I can say this, he's 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 passed, but a uh, friend of mine, Mike Anthony, Tiger Mike Anthony from Canada, man, he his parents were rich, and that's how he funded his wrestling career. Um, it wasn't from the money he made, but he went overseas, he went to Mexico, he, you know, did a lot of things, but it was basically because he could survive on the road uh, without making great money. Yeah, so. yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's a that's a great one. That's that's a great answer, actually. But that makes total sense. I mean, and I think that's a safe one to name. And maybe if you ever want to name some of the others, just let us know. So <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to remember all. I mean, a lot of people did it on, at different, uh, I guess, different levels. You know. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe everyone did it at some yeah, point. I, I you would know. say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Other people could do it in other ways too that that got you heat though, like being a stooge, you know? Right, uh, right. Telling on people for shit and to, you know, reporting back to the office. That's the bad kind of politic is being a fucking stooge. So yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> and there's you know, plenty of those motherfuckers too. Yeah, don't be stooges, y'all. Come on, <laughs> seriously. Just in life, man. You know. Yeah. I mean it's hard not to be sometimes, but you know, right. so <laughs> All right. Well, at Retro Rambles 517 from YouTube asked this question. How did you feel about TNA at the time? Did you think it was just another short-lived promotion or did you expect it to be here essentially 25 years later? Yeah. Um, I hoped it was going to be because, you know, I've seen them start up and shut down many times, you know, uh, mm-hmm. but the confidence there is Jerry Jarrett and uh, Jeff Jarrett, you know, and then you know that they've got a lot of money behind it. But then when, you know, Jerry departed and, and all that, you know, you kind of have questions. There was, there was times I wondered, you know, are they going to end up shutting this down or, or no, or, but it, it, it's hard to call it, man, on that type of stuff. When, you know, we, we can sit here now and say, Oh yeah, I, I knew it was going to be here. No, <laughs> you never know. I mean, so. Right. Yeah, but uh, I had a lot of confidence in it, believe that. And I just wanted to be a part of it. And I hate it that I wasn't a, a bigger part and uh, all that mess. But, you know, we had a good little run. You did. And you're still talked about to this day. So yeah. everybody, lo- everybody loves the new church, even if it's just the intro music, which is incredible. <laughs> right. So, yeah. All right. Well, we've got one more if you've got it in you, brother. Bonus, bonus, bonus question. Bonus, bonus, bonus. All right. So at Scott Fitzgerald 6309 on YouTube, and, and this one's just a question, and I think it's interesting because a lot of people are curious. So how did they get on with Russo? How did you get along with him? Well, uh, I didn't have a whole lot of, if we're talking TNA, I didn't have a whole lot of interaction with him, to be honest with you, because, and then in WCW, neither, because Jeff was my guy there, and then uh, obviously he was, you know, and then we weren't in no angles or anything like that, and I, I just, I felt like Russo was uh, not too interested in us. Um, mm. when he came along there in TNA, you know, um, I don't know why. And, and, and like I said, it was one of those deals too. Oh, we don't know what to do with you. Well, that's your job is to figure out what to fucking do. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Uh, are you asking for my opinion or what? But, um, yeah, man, I just didn't have a lot of interaction with him. Like I told you a hundred times and, and we just said that politicking man ain't my thing, man. Maybe, maybe that's, you know, one of my, uh, negative qualities uh as far as being a wrestler i was just never really good at that man and i wasn't gonna you know go pull him off to the side hey vince man what's the deal you know, i just show up and tell me what to do i'm just i'm just one of the boys man you know, that's all that's all i ever wanted to be was one of the boys <laughs> yeah yeah and i mean there's nothing wrong with that you know with him you know were he and jeff boys they were friends right yeah 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 they were and that friends. was kind of yeah yeah, they were good friends, man. And, uh, you know, there's there's people that, um, you know, work like we, that's kind of, I guess it rolls into that other question again, is politics and people like, like Disco Inferno, uh, mm-hmm. you know, and I liked Disco back in USWA days. And then when I got reacquainted with him at WCW, I found him to be a different dude. And, uh, he, I mean, I don't think it's any big secret that, uh, you know, he's kind of a, a politicker. Yeah. <laughs> what did I, Jerry I Jarrett like think of him? Gimmick when I first saw, you know, like I said, in 93, I just watched a match that I'd forgotten about. Me, we did a six man, me and Jamie and him. Uh, yeah. worked 72 Hottie before he was that. And two others, Randy Rocket and somebody else. But, uh, yeah. I like that gimmick, but just he kind of turned into a kind of a douche to me, but whatever. Yeah. A little stooge-ish maybe or something. Yeah. 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 Well, what are you going to do? But okay. So with, what did Jerry Jarrett think of Russo? Do you remember? I have no clue. I have no yeah. clue. 
um, because I'd say he probably didn't. I'm, I'm sure it's out there. Somebody knows this better than I do, but just a guess. Uh, because when Jerry left, it was kind of when him and Jeff had a falling out for many years. And, uh, you know, I'd say Russo was kind of in, involved with some of that. So right, right. I don't know. Sure, and I might be talking out of my ass, but uh, that's my opinion. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. And I just listened to this podcast, The Dark Side of the Ring, and they did the Jim Cornette Russo, you know, deal where they hate each other. And it was it was pointed to kind of some differences like, you know, Jim Cornette is very liberal, right? Yeah. And but he also is very southern based wrestling. He loves everything wrestling and believes in the business of the wrestling. You know, he, le- he believes yeah. so much in the wrestling business. Whereas Russo cared less about the wrestling business, but cared more about feeding his family. And he's definitely a little more on the conservative side of politics. Right. And, when you when you look at the bare, brass tacks of it, I really can't. I, I I respect that about Russo wanting to do the things for his family and you know yeah. being a little more conservative with things. Where Jim is is you know, but the the thing that comes across it with us as wrestling fans is we love the wrestling business just like Jim Cornette does, and we relate to Jim Cornette because he loves it so much, yeah. but. At the same time, I kind of respect where Russo's coming from and taking care of his family. He cared well, more about his family than the business, you know? Right. And right. So yeah. it's like a catch-22 there, man. Yeah, you know? I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, so I, I can see both sides, but I'm, I'm like you just said, I'm, I'm more leaning with the cornet on his thoughts of it, man. And, oh, uh, for sure. You know, yeah. he— Russo was more, you say feeding your family, yeah, but then also he was more concerned with the entertainment value, right? And the Hollywood type stuff, and you know, hot shot the territory every week, you know, and, <laughs> yeah, man. So, I mean, he didn't really understand how to build a true storyline, and that's where you cannot top Jim Cornette, man. Yeah, I mean, Jim's one of the greatest of all time at that, but I just, you know, when you when you took it down to what the men believe in, it's sometimes like, man. Vince ain't that bad of a guy, but again, I know there's much more to it than that, you know, but when it comes down to it, obviously I'm team Cornette when it comes down to it, but yeah. And no offense to my Northern friends, but he's very, he's very Yankee, (laughs) right? Super, super Yankee. And there's certain elements of Yankee that we Southerners just don't understand. Right. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) I mean, we love y'all up North. Y'all are (laughs) awesome. And we thank you so much for being great listeners. Cause I know y'all, y'all are strong followers of of what we're doing. And we love the fans up North. Yeah. We love y'all, but man, you know, when it comes down to it, we just sometimes don't relate on the same things. But hey, that's okay. You know, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, man, I, that is all I got on this extra special, few extra questions segment of Ask Wolfie. So yeah, sounds good, man. I appreciate it, and we appreciate Marcus. Like I said, y'all check out. If you don't know of Marcus or never heard his story. Check it out. Yeah, yeah. She, you don't have to she, love. She yeah. yeah, you don't have to just love football, man. You can love just a real life story, and that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, now I am positive about this. What we got next week, and uh, I'm just gonna say he's an old timer, but he's been all around, and it's gonna be quite an interesting conversation. Yes, he's incredible. I've been, I've enjoyed his work for decades, and yeah, and we're stoked and very confident that that one is going to happen. So, oh yeah, that was happening. So, <laughs> tune in next week and find out. Same bat time, same bat channel. This is Wolfie D for Jimmy across the street. See you next week. And now a word from our sponsor. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling, the podcast that's based on the old school, but can still help you find the good stuff from today. Jimmy Street and the Plastic Sheik, Jared, are the undisputed tag team champions of the wrestling podcast world. From thought-provoking topics to superstar interviews to action figure expertise, this team does it all, and all they ask is, Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling! Wrestling! 
every other Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. Are you a pro wrestling fan? Well, stop by Captain's Corner, where you can get autographed photos, cards, magazines, and figures from all of your favorite wrestling superstars of the past, present, and future. You'll also be able to participate in live signings in the weeks and months to come. Make sure to stop by Captain's Corner on Facebook and give us a holler. Remember, cheers to the working man. That's right, it's the talk of Middle Tennessee, the channel you love to hate and the channel you hate to love. It's Brian Turner from Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. And if you're looking for matches from Wolfie D to Jerry Lawler to Dusty Rhodes and the team that put a pimp before your eyes and a goatee between your thighs, Booty Call and Athena, go to LostWrestling.com. See, I made it easy for you. Brian Turner's VHS Rehab. Booyah! Join me, Gene Jackson, for the Jackson Interaction Podcast, where I'll be doing one-on-one interviews with people from the world of professional wrestling, as well as stand-up comedy. You can get them anywhere podcasts are available in both video and audio form, but you can find them all at genejacksonpod.com. So that was another great episode. Hey, Wolfie, tell them where they can find you on social media. Jimmy, they can find me in the club, bottle full of bub. I'm just kidding. Uh, They can find me on Facebook. Uh, My personal page is Warren Wolf, W-O-L-F-E. I'm on Instagram, at Warren Wolf 13. You can always find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, at Live Wolfie D. Here's the thing. Wolfie always has offers for his autographed photos. He has a selection of some awesome photos from throughout his career that he will autograph and personalize any way that you want him to. Just contact him either directly at his personal Facebook page or through any one of our other pages, and we'll make sure you get in contact directly with Wolfie. Get those photos, right, Wolfie? Yeah, I've got some good stuff on there, you know, to help with the podcast. Folks, if you can't get out to a show to meet Wolfie D, there's nothing like that, especially for the fans of PG-13 and Wolfie D. And before we go, you can always find me, your host, Jimmy Street, at James Rock Street on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And hey, Jimmy, before we go real quick, I just want to add in there, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I really appreciate First of all, the work you've done for this podcast. You have worked your butt off. Secondly, the people that are liking the page. Beyond that, even more, is the people that are listening. And we really appreciate that. Yeah, and remember, guys, the podcast drops a new episode every Monday at noon. And our past episodes are streaming now on demand on all major podcast formats. Thanks again. I got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. I got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. He got a cat for you don't. And here we go. The original white boy that came out sagging, not bragging. Don't be hating, cause I'm spitting the truth. Still lobbing in color. Don't rush your mother. Utilize a hubcap. I like any other. Back in the day, I was NOD. And I was P to the G plus the one and the three. In case you forgot, they call me Wolfie D. Been cloned and copied so many times. Title suckers taking credit for what is mine. You know who you are without me name dropping wrestling's first white boy coming out hip hop. Been doing it like this since 92. Late low for a while when you thought I was through. Listen real close to these rhymes that I've injected. This shit's so sick it makes your ears get infected. Mad skills, no faking, there is no one great. Cause I'm bringing more folks from over one or later. Not here to play games, so you better be aware. You don't like me, so what? I really don't care. Like the time I keep ticking and I can't be stopped. You suck a step to the side unless you want to get dropped. When I finish, I'll straight knock you out. Please allow me to tell you what it's all about. I'm gonna wind it up. Driving it home, it's Ruby D, baby. Huh? I got a cap for your dome. I got a cap for your dome. You got a cap for your dome. You got a cap for your dome. This has been a James Rock Street production.